Hey everyone, Pastor George here, and for today's mailbag, I got a question concerning Matt Chandler and the things that were happening with him. Um, so I just want to preface this video that saying what I'm talking about has kind of just come out this week, and so it's really hard to tell what is going on. So uh, I just need to tell that in case anything changes in the future. That way you'll understand that I'm very much time locked like everyone else. But anyway, I got a I got a question about Matt Chandler, who's the pastor pastor was I should say. Uh, maybe he still is technically. I wasn't quite able to tell, but he he was the pastor uh, at the Village Church, which is in um, Texas, and it's a big mega church, and it has. Uh, like, but not in the in the kind of I would say in the seedy way or the way that we usually think of, like when we think of like Joel Osteen or people like that. Like Matt Chandler seems to have a really good head on his shoulders when it comes to theology and stuff like that. It's not like he's a televangelist and things like that. Anyway, earlier this week it was uh, it was announced that he would be stepping down or taking a leave of absence because he had a. Uh, text chain with some uh, woman from his congregation that uh, wasn't, at least this is what this, the church and the lawyer team that they had come in and do an outside look said wasn't sexual in nature, but wasn't unwise. That's the, the terminology they use. And you can see, I'll put like over here on the side, you can see all the different news articles that came out and you can see even from the news articles, like there isn't a lot of information for like what's happening. So you know, for, for Fox News, it says popular evangelical pastor abruptly put on leave of absence, citing on, unwise online messages. And the Christianity Today article is good. So if there's any to check out, I would check out that one. Um, but you can see already people like are turning it into a sexual thing. Like, for instance, you can see Salon, which I guess is more secular and more uh, takes a harsher stance against Matt Chandler, frames it within his church's stance on LGBTQ stuff. So it says anti LGBTQ church mega pastor, mega church pastor resigns after getting busted in an unhealthy Instagram relationship. Now that's actually not very uh, accurate to the story because if you read the actual story, that's not what happened. You get busted. He actually went to the elders and told them about it. And then they looked at it. And then the lawyers looked at it. It didn't look, that's not how busted usually looks. Um, but you know, everyone has their own agenda and their own spin on things. So you can see all over the spectrum, people are kind of reacting to this. And I don't really know what to make of it because I don't really have it. I think, though, what this has when it comes to conversation about this issue is like, again, Matt Chandler has done a lot of good stuff. He has good preaching. Um, but like, we don't know enough information at this time to make a, an assessment. I think it's always wise to trust elders Obviously, as a Presbyterian, I, I think that this is a good thing. So if the elders had decided that this was something he should step down over and take a leave of absence, then that's good. I, I think that that's wise, and I think it's good that uh, he did that. And I think at least the way that the article presents the situation is that a woman in the congregation who's friends with the woman that's talking with Matt Chandler went and said, hey, I think what you're doing with my friend is inappropriate. He never really thought about it, but then he went, well, maybe you're right, went to the elders, had them look at it, and then ceased communication, all that other type of stuff, stepped down. I don't know. I think that that's uh, a, like a good sign, but you never know about these things until they come out. People online are all over the place saying it's a cover-up. Some people saying it was no big deal, whatever. I think it's wise to just trust the church. But oh, as with everything else, like we wait and withhold judgment until we know all of the facts completely. Um, and we may never know all the facts, right? And that's why we trust the eldership team at the church um, and, uh, and things like that. So I just thought it was interesting. I had someone asked me about this because normally I don't get asked about, uh, things that are going on in Christian culture. Um, by the way, you might be wondering why this is late and why I look weird. It's because my other camera broke and I had to go out and buy a new one in order to record this. I, I I'm going to be honest. It looks, I, I, the, the, the thing, the program I also use to record changed like updated itself and so i have no idea like if this is going to look good or what this is going to look like because the color balance is all weird so whatever but anyway that's why it's late so i hope all of you guys have a wonderful rest of your thursday i'll see you on sunday and uh peace out